Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and invocation. Officer Training Command Newport, arriving. Deputy Director for Operations, J3, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Butts will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you have fashioned and created us as a people and called us as a nation to a place of trust and leadership in the world. We honor this day our newest naval officers, and we ask for your special blessing upon them as they embark on their journey into the fleet. Father, today our hearts rejoice in the day these graduates have dreamed of has finally arrived. So many are proud of their achievements. However, we are mindful that our achievements are possible only through the life you have given us, through the parents who have loved and nourished us, through the host of peers and friends along life's way who encouraged us, and those here at Officers Training Command who guided and molded each life, developing them into our nation's newest naval leaders. No one person is an island and none are perfect, and each is a witness to your watchful care and forgiving grace. With every accomplishment and privilege came added responsibility, and each one of these officers stands here today accepting of the duty that our nation has entrusted to them. Bless all who have stood by these we honor and give them an extra portion of your love. Watch over and protect them as they head off to their new commands. Today they stand on the shoulders of the greatest naval leaders of history who have inspired generations to fight for the freedoms that make our country great. Give them the strength and courage to carry on that legacy. Be with us today and forever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Mark Hazenberg, Officer Training Command, Newport. OTC and staff, family members and friends who are joining us both in person and virtually, and most importantly, soon to be commissioned officers of class 02 TAC 22. Good morning. I am excited to welcome 91 newest ensigns into one of the most prestigious, challenging, and rewarding careers in our nation, that of a naval officer. To the family and friends joining us, I applaud you for the great work you have done preparing these impressive young leaders prior to their arrival here. Thank you for the support you have given them. It has enabled them to make the sound choices they have made, and we are grateful to these graduates for their choice to serve. We are grateful to you for your continued support. To the graduates, as Commanding Officer of Officer Training Command Newport, I am proud of all of you. You all had many other options than to volunteer to serve your country, yet you chose this path. I thank you for your patriotism and your willingness to serve. I can assure you that a life of service holds many rewarding, many rewards and will bring you great fulfillment. You completed rigorous military, academic, and physical training. You overcame obstacles. Nothing was handed to you these past 13 weeks except opportunity the opportunity to make something more of yourself, to learn, to grow, and to lead. And you seize that opportunity. You embraced it, and today you reap its rewards. I congratulate each and every one of you for the significant and memorable achievement. It is now time to embrace a new opportunity, to lead sailors in the fleet. In the years ahead, your knowledge and leadership skills will be tested often. You will be standing watch and working alongside fellow officers and sailors around the world and around the clock know that you are going to be doing significant and meaningful work for our country. The nation and the Navy expect the best from you, the highest standards of personal and professional conduct, excellence in leadership, and a strict adherence to the Navy's core values, honor, courage, commitment. I urge you to continue to uphold the highest standards of excellence and integrity. Character matters. As writer George Eliot once said, character is destiny. Your choices in life will determine where you end up. Work hard. Learn the warfare and professional skills of your designator. Strive to be the best and give your country your best efforts because nothing else will suffice. In closing, I applaud your accomplishments and perseverance. Each of you are about to embark upon a great adventure, an adventure in which I hope you find both professional success and personal fulfillment. It will be unlike any other job you have ever had or will ever have. And regardless of how long you serve our nation, it will most assuredly be a time in your life upon which you will look back with much pride and satisfaction. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I wish you fair winds and following seas. It is my honor and privilege this morning to introduce to you our guest speaker, Rear Admiral Theodore LeClaire, Deputy Director for Operations, Mobile Assist Mobilization Assistant, J3, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command. A 1991 graduate of Villanova University, he earned his commission through the Navy Reserve Officer Training Corps. He also holds a master's degree from Harvard Kennedy School and the U.S. Army War College. He is a graduate with distinction of the Joint Forces Staff College. He is a surface warfare officer and has experience in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans, as well as the Mediterranean Sea and Arabian Gulf. As part of the Navy Reserve, he has had numerous assignments that include both staff and overseas mobilizations in support of Operations Northern and Southern Watch, Iraqi Freedom, and Enduring Freedom. His two mobilizations were to combat zones in Kuwait and Iraq. His command tours include Inshore Boat Unit 22, Maritime Expeditionary Boat Division 42, Navy Reserve U.S. Forces Korea, CNO Warfare Systems OpNav N9 Reserve Support, and Navy Reserve U.S. 7th Fleet. Rear Admiral LeClaire assumed the duties as Deputy Director for Operations Mobilization Assistant, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command in May 2020. His leadership is absolutely essential to the continued success of the world's greatest Navy, and we are truly fortunate to have him here with us today to share some thoughts with the Navy's newest 91 ensigns. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor today, Rear Admiral Theodore LeClaire. Thanks, Skipper. Um, 
Actually, before I do much talking, I don't usually do this, but I want to get a picture of you guys. You look awesome. Try to squeeze in a little, will you? All right, people are laughing. That's good. They're paying attention. Okay. Hey, good, uh, good morning, everybody. Skipper, chaplain, staff, family shipmates, it's a tremendous honor to be with you today. Uh, in the Navy, we tend to give the talk officers a hard time about bad weather, but I was telling the chaplain, this is on you. You're the one with the relationship up there. So he didn't really deliver for us today, but hopefully we'll get through this before the storm rolls through. So when I stand up here and I look out of the room and those on, on the web, uh, to me, this room is just an endless river of awesome, awesomeness. And I say that not just about the folks in front of me, the people behind them supporting them, the folks on this stage. Um, man, when we talk about the American people being proud of a group of people, it's everybody in this room because we all contributed this, you all contributed to this moment. When you do a lot of public speaking as I have, it's helpful to do audience analysis. One of the first things you want to know is what slot did you get? Before lunch, before dinner, the last slot on the last day, of a conference while everyone is looking at their watches nervously to get flights, that's usually the worst slot. You ask yourself, who's in attendance? Parents, grandparents, mentors, folks in uniform, Air Force, Navy, Marine. Is there any press in the room? Other flag or general officers who didn't tell us, who just snuck in? How many people will be there? Is it on the web, et cetera? So those are all the things I kind of go through in my brain. Um, in addition to that analysis for this one, I did extensive scientific research. I talked to 25 former OCS graduates. The conversation went like this. Hey, shipmate, guess what? I know you went to OCS. Hey, I'm speaking at OCS graduation. How cool is that, man? Hey, do you remember who spoke at your graduation? All 25 did not have one clue. In fact, one guy even told me, hey, I was so hungover, I was afraid I was going to puke. I just wanted to get out of there without making a scene. So that is the site picture that I have. So here it is, a room full of young new officers who have been locked on this base for months with plane tickets in hands, bags packed, who will never remember me. And my mom says I'm special, right? The other thing I ask myself when I do this is what does success look like when I'm done? And it's wonderful when you get in an Uber and someone's complaining it's not the right car, or it's dirty, or it smells, I'm like, hey, man, you're focused on the wrong thing. Success is we get there safely and alive. It's like being on an airplane. I don't really, if someone's saying, hey, I say that too, right? You say, I saw her look back. Like, even when I got in an airplane, I don't care if there are pretzels or peanuts or the drinks don't get, it's like, I want to get there, right? So focusing on the thing that truly matters. So what's success look like? So for the staff, I want you to feel appreciated and a renewed sense of spirit of what you do here. Because I actually think what you do here is one of the most important things in our military. To the families, I want you to feel that your kids are in good hands and will also have time for pictures. I was in this room 32 years ago and went through a ceremony just like this. The only thing I remember are the photos that we have from it. So we will have time for that, I promise. And the new officers, I just hopefully you take away one thing. One thing that you put in your sea bag with you that you leave here with that you use and make a difference in other people's lives. So buckle in, here we go. So to the staff, well done, yet again, another superb class of officers. For a world-class organization like the Navy, nothing is as vital as world-class leadership. As you listen to my remarks, I hope that they provide you a renewed sense of purpose for your mission. Well done and thank you, team. So that's an applause moment for those guys, so for the staff. I also want to thank Dana Steinert. She's an assistant, and she helped me get the books here for you guys, and that we signed the other day that you have in your possession now. You're like, what book is he talking about? We're going to come to the book. Um, so I want to thank her. She's a mainstay here at the Officer Candidate School program, and she's just awesome. So thanks, Dana. For the parents and their rel relatives, please excuse me uh, if I get emotional. What a deep sense of gratitude I have for you. As I close my eyes and I've thought about this moment, I've tried to visualize all the moments for you to get to this point. Their birth, the hospital ride home, their diapers, the first stitches, 
their first lost tooth, the first baseball hit or soccer goal, recitals, first daddy-daughter dances, you name it. All of those moments. To me, there is no single greater gift to this country than to raise a child for its defense. I know there are some parents who are veterans yourself, but this person's humble opinion, your child wearing the cloth of our nation supersedes your own. I know my deploy deployments through the years, especially ones to the sandbox during the war, were much harder on my parents than me. So on behalf of a nation that's grateful, Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Gilday, I want to just say thank you for these young men and women that are sitting here in front of me. Thank you very much. So for the new ensigns, my advice is very targeted to the next two or three years of your life. If I was sitting there, oh, by the way, I would trade these stars for your ensign bars any day of the week. I would love to do it all over again. The, ex, the CO is right. The journey you're about to go on is going to be awesome. Um, but if I was sitting there, I would say, hey, man, what's success look like when I'm done? So here's the bottom line up front. They call that the bluff. Imagine a decade from now, you're walking down the street and you run into one of your sailors, or more likely in our day and age, you connect on Zoom or you're on a social media post or something, and I hope a conversation transpires something like this. The sailor says to his kids, hey, remember the officer I'm always talking about? This is him. This is Mr. Potter. This is the ensign. He was my divo on my first ship. Man, he's one of the most important people in my life. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. I am so grateful to him for being there when I needed him most. For you folks, that's what success looks like, okay? So just bear with me for a few minutes. We're gonna give you the oath and we'll get out of here. I see that not happening from you being the best ship handlers, pilots, or nuke engineers. Those are all important roles which I know you will excel at. You'll experience that type of moment through being a leader. My words are not designed to prevent failure, heartache, mistakes, or regrets. You're going to have all of those things. That's just part of life. I am known for saying that I got more, more scars than stars. I barely got into college. I fought for a two-year ROTC scholarship. I failed to finish BUDS. I failed my first SWO board. The list goes on. Okay? It's easy when you get these readings about, oh, man, Harvard, all this other stuff. I got way more scars than stars. For many years, I even felt I was a bit less of an officer because I wasn't an academy grad. It was a light bulb moment for me when I learned none of my sailors cared where I got my commission. When I showed up to USS Callahan, nobody said, hey, where'd you go to school? They didn't care. They cared about when was chow? The eggs at breakfast weren't very good. When are we going to get liberty? Why are we staying late again in the engineering department when everyone else is getting liberty? That's the stuff they cared about. The funny thing is, most of them didn't even know I'd gone to college. If you're hung up on being an OCS grad, get over it and get over it quickly. We picked you. You are graduating an incredibly tough program, and you're an officer in the greatest Navy the world has ever seen. That is the self-talk I want you to leave here with. I want you also leaving here knowing I think the single most important mission you have is the collective readiness of you and your people. Always be ready. Fire when ready, Gridley is iconic phrase in our Navy's history. Commodore George Dewey uttered those famous words in 1898. On April 25th, after the sinking of the battleship Maine in Havana Harbor, Congress declared war on Spain. That same day, the Secretary of the Navy sent a message to Commodore Dewey with orders to find and to destroy the Spanish fleet. With no notice, Dewey led his squadron from Hong Kong to Manila Bay. And the squadron was the ship USS Olympia. In fact. The CO served on a USS Olympia, but different ship. He's not that old. And he commanded, was, it was commanded by a 40-year veteran named Charles Gridley. Upon sighting the Spanish ships, Dewey entered the bay in a column formation. When the ships closed within range, Dewey uttered the famous words, you may fire when ready, Gridley. The moral of the story is that Dewey's squadron and Gridley's ship, the Olympia, were ready when called upon. Do any of you know when you will be called upon to be tested in fire? The answer is no. You, we, we have no idea. That is why you must always be ready. Your readiness is vital to the success of our Navy, and the great leadership and great, and great leadership will be the critical enabler. I would go further to say that it's not enough to lead your people. I want you to love your people. 
John Wooden, who's the famous 20th century basketball coach, who was actually awarded the greatest coach of the 20th century, all sports, men, women, pro, college, you name it. He had created a leadership pyramid for success. He had been a teacher for many years before he was UCLA's coach. But towards the end of his life, he said the famous pyramid was missing the most important word in life. It was the word love. He said he realized later on that it was in the pyramid. It just wasn't one of the blocks. It was actually the cement or the glue between the blocks that held it together. So leadership is, in fact, about love. My favorite musical, Les Miserables, has one of the greatest lyrics of all time. To, to love another person is to see the face of God. When I was telling my wife I was going to take the risk to talk about love and readiness and Charles Gridley, she said, you know, Ted, you might want to explain what kind of love you're talking about. So, Chris, here I am. Philia is the love without romantic attraction, and it occurs between friends or family members. It occurs when both people share the same values and respect each other. It's commonly referred to as brotherly love or sisterly love. The catalyst for this is the mind. Your mind articulates which friends are on the same wavelength as you and who can you trust. Which shipmates are on the same wavelength? Which ones aren't? Who do we need to get there? What gets them there is leadership. We exhibit philia by engaging in a deep conversation, in deep conversation, being open and trustworthy, being supportive in hard times. The book that was handed out yesterday to you was singularly and purposefully written with you and your task in mind. The audience analysis for this is seagoing ensigns to the fleet to lead our sailors. That is the book I wish I had when I was sitting in the seat similar to you. The key premise of the book is leadership can be learned, like playing the piano or learning to fly a plane. You must study, practice, observe, and be mentored. By virtue of the oath you're about to swear, you are writing a blank check to the American people, to leaders like me, who if need be will cash it, and will put you in harm's way for the success of the mission and the security of our nation. I won't blink to do it. You will hear mission first, but remember, people always. More than a million Americans have given what Lincoln called the last full measure of devotion. It is written in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And he said, Here I am, Lord. Send me, send me. Remember, your sailors answered the same call and they've written the same blank check that you have. They too have parents and families, dreams and hopes for their future. I believe to my core that you can play a central role in helping them achieve their dreams and their vision for what they believe their time in uniform would look like. Today in the audience is my first department head, and you should know that he has supported me and encouraged me and loved me for 30 years. He's the one, one of the most important leaders in my life. His son is in your class. He's named after a commanding officer, and to this day, many of the officers and enlisted from USS Callahan remain close. Together, through Captain Ryan's leadership, we delivered up to honor. Those relationships are one of the greatest gifts your service will afford you. I also know from my audience analysis that there are several prior enlisted in this class, and I'm sure each one of you could share a similar story of mentor, chief, or officer who played a significant role. It's why you're sitting here today. As precious as our nation's treasure is, we can always replace a valve or a panel, weld a pipe or repair a radar. Replacing you is much more difficult. Just a few final recommendations on readiness that Gridley would agree with. Readiness is highest when we start with the individual responsibility, not top-down guidance from admirals like me. It's on the deck plates. Look left, look right. That is where it needs to start. Actions prevail over words. Another way to say it, leadership by example. Love yourself is about being good to yourself. Please take care of yourselves. And if you're struggling any way, raise your hand and get help. Take a knee, whatever. The team needs you mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually fit and focused. Don't be afraid of tough love either. Ask my Chang, he knows it works. The buddy system is proven. Do it, don't let shipmates go off alone. Alcohol is a factor in 98% of the bad things that happen to our team. They negatively impact readiness and we can't afford it. 
help people who need help with that. Know yourself in Footstomp, OCS, NROTC, U.S. Naval Academy, you're all ensigns. No one cares where you got your commission. The Gridley story was about operational readiness. A key enabler is your individual readiness. Your heart, your head and your heart have to be in the game. As time has passed, few know who Charles Gridley is. The truth is none of us knows when we will be called upon, so we must be ready always. So having a Charles Gridley in our tribe is a great value and a gift, but only if members of the tribe pass along these important lessons and learn from them. So in closing, the best part of any speech, for 246 years, our team has amassed some amazing stories. My challenge for you as a new member of the team, study what kind of leader you want to be. Answer the question, what does success look like? And please take care of our people and yourself included. In the poem, The Laws of the Navy by Admiral Hapwood, he writes, on the strength of the link in a cable, dependent the might of the chain. Who knows when thou must, mayst be tested, so live thou bearest the strain. Embrace our culture of readiness and know it is your turn to be tested and bear a strain on the chain. I know our Navy is in good hands. May you always have fair winds as you make your own stories. Thanks, shipmates. The graduating class will now receive the oath of office. Would all military personnel in uniform please come to the position of attention. Class 02 Tech 22, raise your right hand. I state your full name. Having been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy, Do you hereby accept such appointment? And do solemnly swear that I'll support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I'll bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I'll well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I'm about to enter. So help me God. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The graduates assembled from OCS class 02 Tech 22 Honor Class will now be recognized by the commanding officer for their achievements while undergoing training here at Officer Training Command Newport. Ensign Olette has been designated a student naval flight officer and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anton Olet is a graduate of the University of Rhode Island. Anton Olet has been awarded the Lieutenant Thomas E.D. Award for achieving the highest average in academics, military training, and physical fitness while attending officer candidate school. Anton Olet is a distinguished naval graduate. Anton Screeby has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS Bruins, DDG-111 in San Diego, California. Anton Screeby is a graduate of the University of Redlands. Anton Urso has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anton Arso has a graduate, is a graduate of Ubalin College. Anton O'Connor has been designated a civil engineer corps officer and will be assigned to Public Works Department, Newport and Newport, Rhode Island. Anton O'Connor is a graduate of Old Dominion University. Anton McLeod has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anton McLeod is a graduate of Columbia College of Missouri. Anson McLeod is a distinguished naval graduate. Anson Copeland has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anson Copeland is a graduate of Elon University. Anson Purdy has been, has been designated a student naval flight officer and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anson Purdy is a graduate of the University at Albany. Anson Purdy is a distinguished naval graduate. Anson Presmet 
has been designated a student naval aviator, will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Presmick is a graduate of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Ensign Martin has been designated a student naval flight officer and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Martin is a graduate of Southern Illinois University Carbondale. Ensign Aldrich has been designated a student naval flight officer and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Aldrich is a graduate of American Military University. Ensign Alexander has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS William P. Lawrence DDG-110 in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Ensign Alexander is a graduate of Boozy State University. Antonin Mokioja has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS NEETS DDG-94 in Norfolk, Virginia. Antonin Mokioja is a graduate of Western Governor University, Texas. Antonin Arkema has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Antonin Arkema is a graduate of Drake University. Antonin Bailey has been designated a nuclear submarine officer and will be assigned to Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Antonin Bailey is a graduate of Oregon State University. Ensign Beauvray has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Beauvray is a graduate of Texas A&M University. Ensign Barbales has been designated a Supply Corps officer and will be assigned to Naval Supply Corps Officer School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Barbales is a graduate of Metro Metropolitan State University of Denver. Ensign Bakshi has been designated an Intelligence Officer and will be assigned to Naval Intelligence Officer Basic Course in Dam Neck, Virginia. Ensign Bakshi is a graduate of the University of Maryland, Baltimore. Ensign Bennett has been designated an aviation duty maintenance officer and will be assigned to Helicopter Maritime Strike Squadron 49 in San Diego, California. Ensign Bennett is a graduate of North Carolina Central University. Ensign Blackburn has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS Truxton DDG-103 in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Blackburn is a graduate of the University of Alabama. Ensign Blackwell has been designated a nuclear submarine officer and will be assigned to Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Blackwell is a graduate of the University of Virginia. Ensign Brenniger has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Brenniger is a graduate of Appalachian State University. Ensign Brown has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Brown is a graduate of the University of Hawaii, Manoa. Ensign Burks has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS New York LPD-21 in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Burks is a graduate of National University. Ensign Burris has been designated an intelligence officer and will be assigned to Naval Intelligence Officer Basic Course in Dam Neck, Virginia. Ensign Burris is a graduate of American Military University. Ensign Butler has been designated a student naval flight officer and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Butler is a graduate of the University of Kansas. Ensign Kalani has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Kalani is a graduate of Liberty University. Ensign Kalani is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Kamisa has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Kamisa is a graduate of Texas A&M University. Ensign Casper has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Casper is a graduate of Oklahoma State University. Ensign Castro has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS Preble DDG-88 in San Diego, California. Ensign Castro is a graduate of Excelsior College. Ensign Corbett has been designated a student naval flight officer and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Corbett is a graduate of Norfolk State University. Ensign Curry has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Curry is a graduate of the United States Merchant Marine Academy. Ensign Curry is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Davidson has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS Stout, DDG-55 in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Davidson is a graduate of Randolph-Macon College. Ensign Doggett has been designated needed a intelligence officer and will be assigned to Naval Intelligence Officer Basic Course in Dam Neck, Virginia. Ensign Doggett is a graduate of Columbia University. Ensign Duong has been designated a Civil Engineer Corps Officer and will be assigned to Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 5 in Port Wainemi, California. Ensign Duong is a graduate of the University of Washington. Ensign Deuce Bobbick has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Aviation Pre-Flight Indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Deuce Bobbick is a graduate of the University of Colorado. Ensign Ehrlich has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Aviation Pre-Flight Indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. 
Anton Ehrlich is a graduate of Excelsior College. Anton Ehrlich has been awarded the Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce Award for obtaining the highest academic average while attending Officer Candidate School. Anton Farley has been designated a Civil Engineer Corps Officer and will be assigned to Marine Corps Air Station in Cherry Point, North Carolina. Anton Farley is a graduate of Birmingham Young University, Idaho. Anton Veneroli has been designated a Student Navy av Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Aviation Pre-Flight Indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anton Veneroli is a graduate of Chico State. Anton Fernandez has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Aviation Pre-Flight Indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anton Fernandez is a graduate of Coastal Carolina University. Anton Godlin Herrera has been designated a Nuclear Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to the USS Green Bay, LPD-20 in Sasebo, Japan. Anton Godlin Herrera is a graduate of California State University, Northridge. Anton Gora has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to the USS Zumwalt, DDG-1000 in San Diego, California. Anton Gora is a graduate of the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Anton Gunter has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anton Gunter is a graduate of St. Leo University. Anton Hanks has been designated a nuclear submarine officer and will be assigned to Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Anton Hanks is a graduate of the University of Iowa. Anton Harry Andy has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS Oak Hill, LSD 51 in Norfolk, Virginia. Anton Harry Andy is a graduate of Pennsylvania State University. Anton Harry Perez has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS Normandy, CG 60 in Norfolk, Virginia. Anton Harry Perez is a graduate of Yale University. Anton Herrera has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anton Herrera is a graduate of Florida International University. Anton Johnson has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anson Johnson is a graduate of Bowling Green State University. Anson Jones has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS Germantown LSD-42 in San Diego, California. Anson Jones is a graduate of California State University, Dominguez Hills. Anson Kang has been designated a surface warfare engineering duty officer and will be assigned to the USS Tortuga LSD-46 in Norfolk, Virginia. Anson Kang is a graduate of the University of Redlands. Anson Kilba has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anson Kilba is a graduate of Salisbury University. Anson Lee has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anson Lee is a graduate of Indiana University. Anson Leonard has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anson Leonard is a graduate of the University of North Carolina at Wilmington. Anson Leonard is a distinguished naval graduate. Anson Longman has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anson Longman is a graduate of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Anson McCreese has been designated a nuclear submarine officer and will be assigned to Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Anson McCreese is a graduate of the University of California, Davis. Anson McGee has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anson McGee is a graduate of City College. Anson McGee is a distinguished naval graduate. Anson Marlowe has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anson Marlowe is a graduate of Minnesota State, Mankato. Anson Myers has been designated a student naval flight officer and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anson Myers is a graduate of the University of Washington. Anson Minguez has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Anson Minguez is a graduate of Hamilton College. Anson O'Flynn has been designated an aviation duty maintenance officer and will be assigned to Strike Fighter Squadron 195 in Iwakana, Japan. Anson O'Flynn is a graduate of American Military University. Anson Oliveira has been designated an information professional officer and will be assigned to Information Professional Basic Course in Norfolk, Virginia. Anson Oliveira is a graduate of John Jay University. Anson Osachi has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to the USS Dewey, DDG-105 in Yokosuka, Japan. Anson Osachi is a graduate of ECPI College. Anson Addison has been designated an Intelligence Officer and will be assigned to Naval Intelligence Officer Basic Course in Dan Neck, Virginia. Anson Addison is a graduate of the University of Virginia.
in San Pablo. Has been designated a nuclear surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS Benfo, DDG-65 in Yakutsuka, Japan. Ensign Pablo is a graduate of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Ensign Pantel has been designated a nuclear submarine officer and will be assigned to Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Pantel is a graduate of Uranus College. Ensign Peters has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Peters is a graduate of Brown University. Ensign Potter has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS Baton LHD-5 in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Potter is a graduate of the University of Kentucky. Ensign Rates has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Rates is a graduate of the University of North Florida. Ensign Ragsdale has been des designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Ragsdale is a graduate of North Carolina State University. Ensign Saito has been designated an intelligence officer and will be assigned to Naval Intelligence Officer Basic Course in Dam Neck, Virginia. Ensign Saito is a graduate of Stanford University. Ensign Scholl has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Scholl is a graduate of the University of North Carolina. Ensign Scholl is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Schroeder has been designated a civil engineer corps officer and will be assigned to the Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 1 in Gulfport, Mississippi. Ensign Schroeder is a graduate of the University of Washington. Ensign Silver Screening has been designated a student naval flight officer and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Silver Screening is a graduate of Rutgers University. Ensign Slatery has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS Daniel Illinois DDG-118 in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Ensign Slatery is a graduate of the University of Kentucky. Ensign Smith has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS Carl M. Levin, DDG-120, in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Ensign Smith is a graduate of Lock Haven University. Ensign Sniffen has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS Forrest Sherman, Sherman DDG-98, in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Sniffen is a graduate of Southern New Hampshire University. Ensign Snyder has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS Mahan, DDG-72, in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Snyder is a graduate of Arizona State University. Ensign Spengler has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Spengler is a graduate of the University of Pittsburgh. Ensign Stickler has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Stickler is a graduate of Brigham Young University. Ensign Thomas has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Thomas is a graduate of the University of Akron. Ensign Titus has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS Bela Golf CG-72 in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Titus is a graduate of Eastern Washington University. Ensign So has been designated a nuclear submarine officer and will be assigned to Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign So will be a great is a graduate of the University of California, Davis. Ensign Travis has been designated a Civil Engineer Corps officer and will be assigned to Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Ensign Travis is a graduate of Norwich University. Ensign Watson has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to the USS Fort Lauderdale LPD-28 in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Watson is a graduate of North Central University. Ensign Watson has been awarded the Chappelle Clardy USMC Physical Fitness Award for obtaining the highest overall grade in physical fitness while attending Officer Candidate School. Ensign Watts has been designated an intelligence officer and will be assigned to Naval Intelligence Officer Basic Course in Dam Neck, Virginia. Ensign Watts is a graduate of John Hopkins University. Ensign Watts is a distinguished Naval graduate. Ensign Wells has been designated a student Naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Wells is a graduate of Hampton Sydney College. Ensign White has been designated a nuclear surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS Mason, DDG 87 in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign White is a graduate of Massachusetts Maritime Academy. Ensign White has been awarded the Commander Jack Leavitt a Leadership Award for having been chosen by his peers as the candidate who most inspired his class and pers personifies the highest standards of personal example, sound management practice, and moral responsibility. Ensign Williams has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to aviation pre-flight indoctrination in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Williams is a graduate of Virginia Tech. 
Ensign Williams is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Williams has been designated an information professional officer and will be assigned to information professional basic course in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Williams is a graduate of the University of Maryland, Global Campus. Ensign Wu has been designated an aviation duty maintenance officer and will be assigned to Airborne Command and Control Squadron 125 in Wakanda, Japan. Ensign Wu is a graduate of DeVry University. Ensign Young has been designated a nuclear submarine officer and will be assigned to Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Young is a graduate of Oregon State University. Ensign Costigan has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to the USS McCampbell DDG-85 in Everett, Washington. Ensign Costigan is a graduate of the University of Missouri. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing the United States Navy's newest ensigns. We will now conclude the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Please remain in your places until after, after the graduating class has taken their class photo. And remember, the only authorized visitor locations are Nimitz Field and K Hall. On behalf of the commanding officer, Officer Training Command Newport, thank you for attending today's ceremony. This concludes the graduation ceremony.